I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Minty Numbers, Math Medley, and John with Geometry Family Math Night Kits. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, Fraction Quilt. How beautiful is that? So what I'm going to do is go over the activity. I'm going to talk about the materials that you're going to need. And um, then we're going to tie in some of the math. Now, the lesson plan for this can be found on our website at familymathnight.com under the Projects tab and you're going to get everything, um, all the black line masters, all the table tenants, everything that you need um, to do the lesson um, there. Okay, so um, the first thing that you need to do is some prep work in advance. You're going to need to make copies of the um, fraction squares, okay? Um, and again, the black line masters are in the lesson plan. Um, so when you cut, when you uh, copy these out, I highly recommend doing it on um, cardstock. It's a little bit thicker paper to work with. It's easier um, to work with. And then you're going to need to cut them into the um, 8 by 8 inch um, squares that they are. You're also going to need to cut out some um, 8 by 8 inch squares of um, colorful paper. Um, this, again, this is cardstock. Um, but, and it's easier to work with, so 8 inch by 8 inch of those. Um, you may choose to do this part of the activity here where I have a little apple, um, so I die cut a whole bunch of these little apples, or you could use whatever um, uh, shape that you want. Um, you're also going to need to cut a whole bunch of 4 inch by 4 inch squares um, in some fabulous colors. You're going to need to gather um, pencils, I have 15 pencils at the station, um, straight edges, glue sticks, scissors, and 15 each of those, then some tape, and this is going to be used to put their fraction quilts on the main um, quilt. And you can see back uh, behind here there's black. This is just black butcher paper that we had, and then we attached the squares on that. Then you're going to need to print out your uh, table tents. Now, if you've done my other collaborative projects, um, I usually have just one table tent that everybody uh, that works for everybody. We organize um, our uh, the stations beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And loosely, that's um, pre-K one, second, third grade, um, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and so forth. Okay. Um, and the one table tent usually serves all those, but for this activity, I've done it a little bit different. Each level now has its own specific table tent. And again, if you're familiar with um, uh, my activities, then you know that all the beginning level is um, usually yellow, all the intermediate is green, and then all the advanced is, um, is blue. You don't need to do that, but it's just that um, that's, uh, that's how we do it. Um, so then, in addition to that, I also put out some um, table tents like this that let the participants know, oh, that's the beginning um, area over there. And you'll get, uh, these come from our kits, but you'll get table tents in the lesson plan. Okay, so once, and I like to, to um, copy these out on cardstock as well, because then they stand up, they stand up really nicely all by themselves. Okay, so... Um, that's all the prep work that you're going to need to do. And now let's get into the actual um, activity. I'm going to start at the beginning level. So I'm just going to walk you through step by step. This is exactly what they would be reading then. Of course, the parents are there working with their children. So you're going to need four, four inch squares in two colors. So here we go. Here are my two colors and I've got four there. So they're counting already. Um, use a pencil and a ruler to draw a diagonal line on each square. So you can see I've already done that there. That's what they're going to do. Um, the third step is to cut on each of the diagonal lines so that you end up with a total of eight triangles. So again, we're counting and they'll end up with, these don't match my colors over there, but these are the ones I have. So they'll end up with eight triangles. <clears throat> Now they're going to arrange their <clears throat> eight triangles on their quilt square to create a design. When you are satisfied with your design, use the glue stick to glue down the triangles. And then they're going to choose one of the eight inch colored squares and glue an apple okay, in the center. 
Hand both of your quilt squares to the station facilitator who will add it to our collaborative quilt. Thank you for helping. And then um, on the bottom, I always have these little mathy thought questions. So uh, for the beginning level, it's describe the attributes, characteristics of a square, of a triangle. So now we're getting them to think about geometry, right? And then the second one <clears throat> here is, how many triangles does your design have in your first color? Again, they're counting. How many triangles does your design have in your second color? How many total triangles are in your design? Kind of like an equation. And then there's a challenge here. How would you write that as an equation? Okay. Um, so yeah, if they want to do those, those are available for them to extend to that activity. <clears throat> okay, now the intermediate level, okay, the first step is you will need four four inch squares in three colors, two squares for color one, and one square each for colors two and three. Okay, so two squares color one, color, color two, and then color three. All right. Colors one, two, and three. Use a pencil and a ruler to draw a diagonal on each square, then cut on the diagonal so that you end up with a total of eight triangles. And by the way, here and in the beginning one, I show them exactly what that looks like, so they have a visual of that. Um, step number three. For colors two and three, fold one of the triangles in half so that, oops, I've got two and three, they're the larger ones here. Let's say this is one of them. Fold one of the triangles in half so that when unfolded, two congruent same triangles are created. So here's my sample. I folded it in half. When I open it back up, again, back up again, you can see that it's created two congruent or exactly the same triangles. Cut on the fold line to separate the two triangles. And I show them in picture form exactly what that looks like too, in case they need that additional help. Number four. Use one of the small triangles that you just created. So now I just cut those, right? So now I've ended up with these two, okay? Use one of the small triangles that's just created as a template. So now I'm gonna put this on here. It's just easier. I mean, they could continue to fold and cut, but it's just easier now to use that as a template and then draw their line down, okay? Um, and draw a line on the other three colored number two and number three triangles cut on the line so that you end up with a total of four triangles each of colors two and color three. So now we need to regroup, right? So number five says you should now have four large color one triangles, four small color two triangles, and four small color three triangles. So they get to make sure that that's exactly what they have. Arrange the triangles on your quilt square to create a design. For a challenge, see if you can create a design that has mirror symmetry, where one half is the reflection of the other half. Okay. And let's see, this right here, there you go, mirror symmetry, that half, if I flipped it over, would be the same as the other half, okay, mirror symmetry, um, or reflection symmetry. Glue the triangles onto your quilt square, then choose one of these, put that apple on it, hand both to the station facilitator. Perfect. Okay, so now here are these math thought questions. Number one, which of your colors represents half of the total design? Now they're doing, you know, some, um, some fraction work for our fraction quilt. How could you prove your answer? And I love this, because now they're communicating uh, mathematically with their parents, right? So each one represents half, and then here's a challenge. What fraction of the total design represents color two? Explain how you know. So remember, there was just one square for color two, so what fraction does this represent out of the, the whole, right? It's not gonna look like this, it's gonna have triangles, right? But what fraction does that represent? So some good thought questions for them. Okay, and then, and then in the advanced one, you will need four four-inch squares in four colors. So here are the four, my four colors, okay, four colors. Um, use a pencil and a ruler to draw the diagonal on each square, just like we did here, and I've got a picture of that. Um, cut that out, you'll end up 
with a total of eight triangles. Okay. Fold one of the triangles in half so that when unfolded you have two congruent. Remember this from the intermediate. Cut on the fold line to separate the two triangles. And then, again, you're going to use that one as a template for all the other triangles that they created. So they're going to end up with, at the end, 16 small triangles. Then they're going to arrange their triangles on the quilt square to create a design. And again, I have a challenge if they want to take, take that. Um, see if you can create a design that has 90 degree rotational symmetry. So 90 degree rotate, you take something and you rotate it 90 degrees, and then you rotate it 90 degrees again, and then 90 degrees again. See if you can create a design that has 90 degree rotational symmetry. And again, kind of give them a little bit of an example of what that would look like. Okay. Then choose one of the eight inch colored squares, a blue and apple, hand both the station um, facilitator. Okay, so here are their thought questions. If the quilt square represents one hole, what is the fractional representation of one of these small triangles? What fraction of the whole does that represent? And number two, how many of the small triangles are needed to cover one fourth of the quilt square? And how many are needed to cover two fourths of the quilt square? And of course, two fourths is the same as one half. How many of these cover one half? Get them to think about those fractions. Now, I also created a second advanced table tent. Okay? And you have a choice of which one um, you would like to use. Maybe you want to use both of them. But in this one, everything kind of remains the same except for this part. When they design their um, fraction square, color one needs to represent two fourths of the square. Color two has to represent one fourth of the square. Color three and color four each have to represent one eighth of the fraction square. And at the very beginning it tells them, go down here, look at what the fractional values are, and use that to help you figure out the colors that you're going to need. So a little bit heavier on the fractions um, in this one. Um, but it's good for them, they can do that. So once they have that done, then again, we gather them all and look at how fabulous this, this turned out. And they love, um, we're gonna hang this uh, in the office and, um, and everybody gets to come in and enjoy that. But again, in all these collaborative projects I do, um, every student is represented, is uniquely represented, right? Because they each did their own um, part of the total project. So again, another super fun project. Have fun.